Hi, I'm Stella from It's Too Late to Apologize. And I'm Jenny from Expresso Reads. And we are here to do a bit of a book discussion. Because We've already kind of had it. And we're gonna yeah, we, we were just sitting around here <laughs> chatting forever. I'm like, do you think we should turn this camera on? Yeah, maybe we should catch some of this. I okay? thought it was filming. Yeah. So uh, one topic that we thought we should talk about, and it's becoming more and more popular nowadays, is the topic of novellas. And it seems a lot of series are coming out with their own novellas to either add on to the story with other characters that are in the story, or also um, adding more events that happen in the time frame that the story takes place in. So I, most of the novellas that I've seen are about other supporting characters that um, are in the stories. Right. But you're saying that... Well, I've had a problem, and admittedly, I haven't read a million novellas. I kind of tend to stay away from them. Because I kind of do, too. Yeah. <laughs> but with, like, uh, Cynthia Han's Bound or Unearthly series, I read um, Unearthly, and then I read Hallowed, and there was a novella in between Hallowed and Boundless that I didn't read. And then in Boundless, they kept referring to things that happened in the novella, and I had no idea what was going on. So I felt like I didn't necessarily enjoy Boundless as much as I could have had I had that information. And I don't think not reading a novella should make you suffer no. when you read the consecutive books in the series. It made me really upset. I don't know, because I think that's like a novella done wrong. Because a yeah. novella, is it, it should just be there for more information if you wanted to know more or anything because then it should just right. be a book in the series if you need that information and then they're going to have all these inside jokes that like right. you don't know about or, or anything I right that's not good no it really really irritated me yeah but I will say that I do like the idea because there are a lot of books that I read and I'm like oh I really like the best friend I want to know more about the best friend and now with these novellas that are exploring the secondary characters more you get that. Yeah. I, I totally agree because I know that there was a novella released for the Delirium series and I know one of the stories is from Raven's um, point of view and I loved Raven. Like I wanted more Raven. See, and I Give just found out that there Raven. was one from Alex's point of view and I'm like, oh my God, I need to read it. <laughs> no, and it also seems that there's also a bit of um, um, spin-offs, I guess, that are happening with novellas yeah. as well. Like it's it's you know the, the novels tend to be smaller, obviously, which is why they call they're called novella. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes we see a lot of these and and it ends up being like spin-offs for uh, and I don't know if they'll create like a whole other series or, or whatnot. Well but... and novellas don't only happen for series. Um I actually just read Fake and Normal by Courtney C. Stevens. Mm -hmm. And the love interest in that, I loved him. His name was Bodhi. And I just found out that there's a novella called The Boy with the Blue Hair. And it's from his perspective. Okay. So is it from the novel or No, novel, I think it's like it? it's like a story about him. I don't read synopsises. <laughs> <laughs> I don't read All I know is it's about Bodhi. <laughs> Oh. And you want it. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's not only series that they do these novellas for. And then I think that's pretty cool. And then Katie McGarry's series kind of, she made the whole series kind of like novellas and then extrapolated on them because each book is from a different character's perspective that you meet in the previous book, mm -hmm. which people love. And I am totally left out of this pushing limits love because... I really didn't like the first book, and I know you guys are all probably throwing shit at your screen right now, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> They're all hating you on the they other are. side of the, the, they are. the Google machine. They're like, turn this shit off! <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be like a growing, um, a growing portion of the market. Like, we keep seeing more and more novellas happening, and I think it also has something to do with the size of novels nowadays. Like, it used to be when, I mean, I was young, uh, that a paperback novel would be like 250 pages long. And now the books are getting so much longer. And especially from like Harry Potter days. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like 500 page novels in these series. And I mean, Harry Potter, I mean, some of them were like 800, 700 pages long. So yeah, this is a great <laughs> example. Thank you, Jenny. Um, like an example of like a 200, 250 page novel. Yeah. And that is like a normal paperback that you used to read. And now they're becoming these these much larger books. And so I think it's also another way like to keep audiences 
on the edge of their seat in between books in a series because it's a lot easier for an author to put out a novella in between. And also it can make up hmm. cut out stories. Like a lot of times there's there's scenes in a story that, you know, maybe perhaps the author has to cut because there's a limited amount of space that they have available in a novel. And so sometimes these scenes get cut out and then we can make a novella of it. It's sort of like an extended cut. Also, I just thought of this. It was like, light bulb. Um, novellas can be, okay, I just read Split Second by Cassie West. And in that series, there was Pivot Point, which I read a year ago, and then I read Split Second. And Split Second had very, very little, like, refresher. Like, it didn't really remind me what happened at all. So they kept talking, like, they were like, oh, the Bobby incident. And I was like, huh? I don't remember what that is. But maybe, had there been a novella in between them, it would have kept the story fresher in my mind, and I would have had more success reading Split Second. Well, this is like, this is also another topic that I love. I love talking about as well is when you're reading in a series how annoying is it when the next book has to like recap a whole bunch of See, stuff it's from annoying the when book. you're binge reading them yes. but when you are a book blogger and you don't binge read and you re actually read the books a year apart and you have the memory of Dory from Finding Nemo <laughs> you need oh, those recaps I saw them yeah <laughs> but apparently there are blogs that just post recaps of books and you can just go read it. Oh, yeah. Because I, I'm i always so... But you know like, what? Who, who doesn't read books? Because I always think that those recaps, it's almost like for people... Because I like being a writer, I also hear from other authors that, oh, you know, well, someone might not have read the first book in your series. You have to, like, set well, who, up the second book stupid. for people who might not have read. I'm like, who doesn't read the first book in a series? Who does? <laughs> I'm reading uh, Kristen Simmons. Simmons is... is her Article 5 series. Oh, yes. Um, I read all of those books one year apart. And in the beginning of the book, there was always like a conversation or an interview or something that just made everything come back. Okay. And I think that's part of a successful sequel. No, that's good. Because if I am lost as to all the references and I'm not getting into the book because I can't get can't what's remember. going on, that makes the reader not like your book as much. And I think Kristen Simmons did that very successfully. So she, it was just like like an epilogue sort of thing? No! Or, like it was just oh, in the just, story. There would be a conversation that happened between like Chase and Ember or... There was one where someone was interviewing her in the beginning of three, I think. And it just brought everything back. Hmm. And I think that's a good tool that's to good use one. in a series. Executed well. Executed Cassie well. Cassie West, take note. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love you and I love all your books. I really did. All right, so we've chatted a bit about novellas and also about, um, you know, sort of uh, how series in general it kind yeah, of turned series. into kind of a little bit of that. <laughs> um, so you guys uh, leave your comments. What do you guys think about novellas and do you read them? I find for myself, I haven't read all that many. Uh, but I it, I see so many of them being released. So I've actually... People must be reading them. Someone must be. Right? <laughs> and, and oftentimes they're released on uh, like an e-format. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times they're not published or bound. They're like but, and I find, sense. Yeah, but I find more and more of them are getting grouped together and published now, right. which, is, which is nice. Yeah, I think you can buy like a bound version of all the Delirium ones because yeah. there's like nine for that book. No, no. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> A little exaggeration there. Little um, so I yeah. Hyperbole. I, I was going to... Took it right out of my hand. Um, so you guys leave some comments. What are your thoughts? And uh, if you have any ideas of what me and Jenny can ramble on about on our next video. Tell us. Feel free to leave those because, yeah, you know, <laughs> suggestions like are nice. Yeah, well, we're probably just going to sit here and ramble for about another hour after we turn this video off. So, yeah. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.